nice interface, confusing a little bit. Maud, do you hear me? Do you hear me? Yes. Oh, now it's working perfect because I somehow probably pushed the wrong button. So no, I'm happy. Good, I hear you. Perfect. Yeah, that's great. So now, now I'm because it felt wrong, but now it feels right. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, and do you also see the presentation that would be on top of everything? Perfect. Yeah, this should work as well. Unfortunately, I will, you will see my presentation a little bit in advance with the slides. But I don't seem to manage to just make a nice, sleek presentation. No worries. So during the presentation, I will just let you know when you should uh, change the slide, right? Exactly. Good, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> What is this? So maybe we could slowly move all to the plenum. Um, it's working. It's working with a few uh, seconds of uh, delay exactly as it is. So we are actually uh, broadcasting our start, which is not completely glorious, but kind of human. Yes, that would be great. We can reach the IT guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, we actually did. Maud, I guess that we go through your presentation, right? We don't exactly. have to share your... Okay, good. Exactly. You don't have to share slides. Okay, good. But yes. the challenge is going to be for the challenge owners to keep, uh, to keep it to a few minutes, to so five minutes or so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That would be great. Okay. I got some civil works today, and maybe it's going to be loud during my presentation, but I hope uh, I can manage this. Well, for the moment, it's filtering nicely. We don't hear anything. Okay, yeah, yeah. You can try, I don't know if mine is better, but let me hear it. I am on some You can close it and make Could somebody? Close a bit the window because I'm fully in the. I think I'm filtering the, the air of the whole passage. Hello, everybody. Hello. My camera is working, or isn't it? Hi, everyone. Yes, it is working, Stefan. Should I switch it off? Uh, maybe your microphone for the moment. Yeah. I don't see myself. That's... Uh, That's probably because it's a presentation. Because of the streaming or something? No. Oh, maybe. Yeah, that's true. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. For the streaming, I didn't put the... But I see the participants, so I hope you also see each other. 
but you're you won't be on the streaming So I hear the I hear the church ringing and all my notifications for birthdays are popping up so I think it's nine mm -hmm. and um, I'm going to start and ask why did we wake up this morning so early if not to change the world at least bit by bits so um I'm very happy to welcome you. Uh, I'm Mo Châtelet from Open Data, uh, and I'm going to be I'm going to be hosting this uh, hack day, the Energy and Climate Hack, uh, today and tomorrow, together with uh, Andrea and Oleg, who are here. Together with me, we are almost Corona conform here, uh, and. Um, yeah, I'm very happy to welcome you online. I would have been even happier to welcome you on site, but it's our third attempt to uh, have this event going on. And we really did our best and tried hard to have it on site, but COVID was stronger. But still, um, I'm sure that we will have a great event and uh, that we, we will have also great results. Uh, and I know for a fact that you will have new friends at the end of, uh, of the few day, of the two days. Uh, we, we've seen it time and times again. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to what's going to happen now. Uh, I'm just a little bit worried. I just realized I never communicated again clearly that um, Switzerland and England have one hour uh, difference. So I hope not all of our English participants uh, are going to show up in one hour, but well, I think everybody is aware, I hope. So I'm not alone welcome, welcoming you uh, today, together with Andrea and uh, Oleg, but also uh, we are here with the colleagues of uh, Swiss Power for uh, co-hosting this event together with the Swiss Embassy. So um, I don't see if Louise is here on the computer. Hello. Louise Letzner from- Welcome uh, everyone. Hi, thank you, Maud. <laughs> from uh, Swiss Power. So Swiss Power is actually an alliance of 22 uh, public services and utilities. Public utility services or in which other, whichever order uh, in Switzerland. And they're uh, fostering innovation in the sector. And the Swiss Embassy co-initiated and co-organized this event together with Swiss Power and, and us. And of course, also the, um, together with the, the conference, which is going to take place tomorrow uh, about uh, decarbonizing cities. So this, uh, the hackathon is a parallel event to the, to the conference. And we hope to uh, bring concrete solutions uh, at least starts or prototypes for concrete solutions or to solve some part of, of uh, longer ongoing uh, research about uh, climate change and its consequences. Um, so many other people are organizing uh, this hackathon together with us. Um, we're, we are very happy to have the support also of the federal offices for environment and the federal office for uh, energy in Switzerland, the city of Bern and uh, the Energie Wasser Bern, who are uh, also really supported the, the project. And we will work together also for the challenges with uh, different research institutes in Switzerland and uh, startups, Swiss startups. So it's rather focused on Switzerland, the, the issues, but we all know that local issues are actually global issues as well. Just uh, it's a different focus. 
but it's similar. The solutions are similar for all of us. Um, yes, so we will get to know uh, all our partners a bit closer when we go uh, deeper into the challenges a bit later. But first thing first, uh, how are you doing today? So we're going to uh, do a little Mentimeter. Uh, Mentimeter questions, and I think they should be in the link in the chat. So the, you should follow this link. And sorry, Eugene, kind of have my warm up. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> I think I'm, I missed a bit of the information. <laughs> what what should, should we do? I send the link to everyone in the chat. Yes. I have to stop mine. Sorry. Okay, so can we do it directly from the computer, the phone? How are we feeling today? This is a first start with the technology. It's always a little bit uh, like me, it has to start. Yes, we have it. Okay, so it's quite actually uh, looking like the way I do feel. And we have another question, which would be uh, as an introduction to, um, to our question, decarb decarbonizing cities. Um, what is your best tip for to decarbonize your life? So this would be the next question.
Sorry, uh, everybody in the room was hearing me, so nobody realized that uh, uh, was you were not hearing me. So I was uh, saying that basically all your answers to the Mentimeter was uh, were, were quite clearly showing that uh, there is not one silver bullet to the question of decarbonizing cities and decarbonizing our uh, societies, but it's a whole. complex uh, of to tech Yes, sorry, Maud just dropped out because her hotspot isn't working anymore and we don't have a fixed sorry. internet line. She's trying to reconnect, but yeah, we exactly. have the mayor of Bern who's just joined us. Yes. So that's working. Technology is And sometimes... Maud is back. Yes, I'm back, sorry. Uh, I hope it should, if I don't get uh, further phone calls, it should be a bit easier. Ah, this is interesting. Today is everything uh, a little bit resisting my uh, competences. Here, it should be there. Is this okay? Oh, so sorry. This is a difficult start of the day. All right. So I think I was somewhere where I explained or, or stated that... Um, we are here to, for innovation, uh, to fight climate change. And we had open data, but I think it's shared by all the people who are taking part to this uh, hackathon, are actually standing for uh, a free um, flow of information, uh, an open way to tackle problems, to tackle questions, to tackle uh, information about the state of the situation and uh, that's why we are here and um, we know it's that innovation is the result of this collaboration um, so I'm sorry for this little bit acrobatic start but um, somebody who knows about the complexity of uh, the issues that we face as communities is uh, our uh, next next guest. It's uh, uh, Mr. Alec von Grafenried, the mayor of the city of Bern, uh, who actually is going to introduce us uh, with a few words into the hackathon. So I stop to share my screen. And I hope that Yes, I'm here. Hello. Yes. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hope you can hear me. <clears throat> welcome to Energy and Climate Hack and uh, welcome to the city of Bern uh, in this uh, little bit different way, but we're used to that. Uh, I'm very pleased to open this special event today, gathering of many young talents from Switzerland and from the UK. I also warmly welcome all the interdisciplinary teams We'll spend two intense days together, as I hope so. I'm curious to learn about uh, what ideas you will let mature, but I already know we share a common goal to foster innovation for a better future. Uh, as you know, about 70% of the globally emitted CO2 is linked to, <coughs> to cities. Um, as a growing community lives in cities, we have to ask ourselves, how can we decarbonize cities, so that's the right question. How can people consume and produce goods, use public and private transportation, build houses and raise children, 
and in the meantime, act sustainable. That's a huge challenge and we can all only solve it uh, together. What we need now is the courage to open our mind up to new possibilities and think in new ways without forgetting our past and our traditions. Social acceptance is the key to long-term success. The solutions have to fit the people to whom it is meant to facilitate the way of life. Albert Einstein said how a really good idea can be recognized as such in advance, the realization of it seems often impossible and it may cause resistance in, in the beginning. <clears throat> and uh, I share this experience very much. Uh, Switzerland is now taking an effort towards the production and use of renewable energies, as for example, our uh, local uh, provider in the canton of Bern, BKW, um, regional energy supplier has decided to take the nuclear power plant off grid. There are also tests to use infrastructure of street lights as a source of electricity for electric cars, or we are connecting, we are constructing a, a large grid of um, distance heating uh, <coughs> from our incinerator. So a lot of actions like these taken by energy suppliers, governments and enterprises will sum up the new image of Bern as a smart city. While politicians all over the world are discussing strategies how to best encounter climate, climate change, we are already taking actions to test underlying assumptions in the field and reduce our footprint step by step in Bern, in London, as in Amsterdam and elsewhere. Sometimes we have to stop arguing and start acting. The world we live in is, of course, complicated. Therefore, innovation can only be created by smart people for uh, different fields like science. Economy. Events like this energy and climate attack are motivating experts to cross borders mentally and physically as they share a common goal, decarbonizing cities. Together we can make a difference and lead Switzerland and the UK to a sustainable future. Innovation business is a hard work. I appreciate that you are willing to invest time and manpower to this common goal. I wish you a lot of energy to find common ground and endure phases of little sleep and consolidation. Events like energy and climate hack are important for us to sense that we are all change, change makers, since we can only make a difference when we work on innovative solutions together and put other differences aside. I'd like to thank Swiss Power and the Embassy of the UK for organizing NG and Climate Attack here in Bern. Even in the digital world, it is still very important to connect people in the real world to discover new ways of thinking and works of innovative solutions in a short time. Let's see what the hackathon will lead us. Thank you for your attention and I wish you a very good day and a very good hack. Thank you. Thank you very much, Herr uh, von Ried. And uh, we are going to, to try our best to bring uh, interesting solutions to the, to the world. Uh, so I will get back on the screen. Uh, does anybody of you have a question? It doesn't seem like it. So thank you very much. And uh, maybe you have the time to join us for the presentation of the results uh, on uh, Wednesday, tomorrow at 1, 1.15. And uh, otherwise, uh, we will make sure that you get to know the results. So now we are online. We have to do this hackathon online. How is it going to work? Um, so most of you are familiar with the tools. Uh, I hope you will. You are even more familiar than I. It seems some, uh, sometimes. Uh, no, it doesn't work. Then it switches everything off. Ah, does it work? It works. Okay. So happily, it seems to work. Um, so we have uh, these online tools. Uh, we want to use a documentation 
uh, platform that we use for all our hackathons, which actually serves uh, the long-term documentation of all the projects that happen during uh, these, these events that we are actually organizing since 10 years. So it's very important for us that documentation is taken care of by the teams. Um, we have, of course, the challenges that I will, we will show you later. They're here on the, on, in the list because the, uh, we will present you a little bit later. Um, the goal is to have results and we, you, will, you will present us uh, our solutions, uh, your solutions on, uh, on Wednesday. So the tools that we're using, we're already on Zoom. Some of you were visiting WonderMe this morning. Uh, Wonder Me is, uh, I, I will go a little bit, uh, I will show you a slide how it works for those who didn't go. Slack, I hope most of you are uh, familiar with Slack, which is a bit of a mix between, um, I would say it's the child of WhatsApp and uh, email. So it helps to um, gather communication and uh, keep a narrative. Uh, the, our, uh, our documentation platform is the hack.opendata.ch or point.opendata.ch, um, which I will also introduce you uh, shortly. We have Airtables, which are a collaborative equivalent of Excel, uh, where we have a database. Uh, for energy topics and a database for smart city topics where we gathered um, links towards that data sets. So they're like an extra collection of data uh, which you could hopefully use to cross um, reference your, your, your results and your challenges. And we suggest to use Miro or Miro, I don't know how you say it in English speaking room, um, which is a whiteboarding space uh, where you can um, for sure brainstorm together, but also make mind maps uh, and all sorts of different um, representations. So I will quickly switch there to Slack. On Slack, uh, uh, maybe you will, you should have a similar uh, presentation on your Slack channel. Um, you will actually see there the channels on the left-hand side. And you actually are now all inscribed to all the channels. So it's gonna be quite noisy if you keep in, uh, following all of them. Of course, you're free to follow all of them, but if it's too noisy for you, you can for sure, uh, once you've decided with which challenge team you want to work, you can switch off some of the uh, challenges. Uh, channels, but please keep the general and questions, all the, the general channels so we can keep on communicating together. And of course, feel free to ask questions uh, to the group, uh, to ask for support or technical ideas or information that or hints for further data, whatever uh, you think the group could support you with or us as the organizing team. Uh, the Wonder Me is where we're gonna choose the, ch the challenges later on after the channel, uh, the challenges are gonna be presented. So you see these grayish areas are actually named after the different challenges. Uh, and you should be able to register quickly with a name and I think, I think you need a password, but I'm not even sure if you have to create a password. You have to register quickly on, on WonderMe and then with the link you have, you enter directly this room and you should be able to point at an area. Uh, yeah, there is a little trick. You have to point and hold to the place where you want to go to. And as soon as you join another dot, you see me here in the middle, there is a little dot, it's me. Uh, as soon as you join this other little dot, there is a video con conference starting. Uh, so each circle of video conference can host up to 15 people. And I find it a very intuitive and nice way to create those groups. And also actually, if you would use it during the two days of the hackathon for your conversations uh, and for your group meetings, it's 
for us as organizer, great to see who's working with whom uh, in real time, and we can join a conversation, we can uh, uh, participate, suggest. It's, it's a very intuitive and uh, nice overview to see how things are proceeding. And this is a, a snapshot of the hack platform. We, we, we will uh, present it a bit uh, deeper later in the day at, at five, uh, half past five tonight. But just to show you um, the hackpoint.opendata.ch uh, is um, our hacking platform where you can register and log in either uh, through the Slack that you registered to the, of the hackathon or create a password. Uh, if you do so with a password, please inform us that you did so we can authenticate you quickly. Uh, so tell us on Slack. And then you will be able to start a project, um, like start project and challenge here you see. And uh, this is the next slide. I'll show how it looks. And below you will also find again, these links to more data, uh, Swiss related data sets about energy or uh, about climate. And we are always happy because it's a co collaborative work. We're always happy if you can suggest data sets you know about, uh, open data, of course. But that's the bottom uh, over the, down there. So once you want to create a project uh, on the Hackathon platform, uh, so of course you have to register and uh, either you join a project or you create a first project where you put the title and a few information, then make sure to save it and you'll come to the next uh, to the next pages where you can continue editing uh, and document the information about your results. So the nice thing about the, our hackathon platform is that it synchronizes with all the, the Git uh, repositories. So we can really go um, later on. And uh, for those of you who will make open licensed projects, which we actually hope for, uh, people can really get to the source of uh, your work and work further on the project, or at least at least, at least contact you and uh, see the documentation of what was done. So this I'll go deeper later, but it's basically we want you to document a short executive summary of the project. I tell you that all now because after we we go into the challenges, you'll you won't listen to me anymore. So. I tell you all the boring stuff now. Um, so yeah, so we will hope, we expect from you to, to uh, document the project with an executive summary and to um, present uh, your results in a, in a few slides uh, that you will present tomorrow at uh, around one. The final, uh, well, the deadline for the slides is tomorrow at midday, so we can put them together and make sure everything's fine. Uh, in the Google template that you, you have the link for, or we will share it again in the Slack. And if you like, uh, it's always very nice to hear you tonight all together uh, for a quick checkpoint where everybody presents their results or the states of their projects. So this we will do in plenary session here in the same uh, Zoom link. So for some reason, this is the one here, yeah. So the challenges that we're going to see now, um, if you went into the Slack channel, you probably start to be familiar a bit with the topics, but we will start with the Eco Booster. Um, and I am happy to welcome, I think, uh, Andrea Zien maybe is presenting. Who is presenting the challenge number one? Mm -hmm. Enthusiasmus is clear. Okay, so either 
I don't see anybody moving there. So we'll go to the challenge number two already and we'll get back later. So the challenge for the challenge owners right now is to keep it to five minutes because they have lots of slides. So uh, challenge number two, local sustainable uh, sustainability booster, Lucas. Yes, Mark. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Very well. So thank you, um, local sustainability booster. So let me explain quickly. Um, maybe we can uh, go one slide further. Uh, so the uh, Swiss Federal Office of Energy, uh, together with the support of Energie Schweiz, uh, developed this year a online tool called Energie Reporter, where you can compare um, the municipalities in Switzerland uh, regarding the three domains of uh, renewable uh, energy productions or solar, solar uh, energy production. A renewable heating and electro electromobility. So what is the potential or how far are municip municipalities, um, how, how far did they go or how far are they in their uh, track to, to get 100% uh, renewable, right? So uh, now we have uh, some pressure on the municipalities because uh, people are able to compare them with each other and, and, and see how far uh, they are going. But what would really be um, useful for, uh, for decision makers were uh, to identify which are the, the features or which are the key um, elements that, that help to boost uh, sustainability on a regional level, right? So we have the results, but we don't know why, uh, why these figures. So, if if you if you are um, if you have some knowledge in statistics, if you are a data scientist, if you are a machine learning engineer, and uh, hyper hyperparameter tuning and uh, and uh, f f uh, feature engineering are no uh, uh, you 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 are you you know this uh, this term so uh, please join and let's find out uh, what happens in this black box, why, uh, which are the key elements, which are the key features that, le that lead that some municipalities are uh, farther in this track than, than others. So this is my email address. Uh, you can write, if you have some questions, you can write right on Slack. Uh, I think that's the easier way. And um, even if you're just interested in the data set, uh, I'm eager to, to share, um, but it will be really nice if you join uh, the challenge and uh, you accept the challenge. So we see you later on the Zoom, uh, on the Wonder Me. Yes, exactly. Yes, okay, perfect. I was a bit worried. <laughs> okay, so the challenge number three, uh, Tobias. Yeah, do you hear me? Yes, very good. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, good morning, everyone, from my side. Um, I'm working for Yasai uh, in Zurich, so not that burn based, but uh, don't uh, get yourself distracted from that. Um, what we are planning to do is uh, building vertical farms uh, all around Switzerland and also uh, international. So we are at the moment building our first pilot plant in Zurich, but we are also very interested uh, what would be possible in Bern. So if you could just go to the next slide. Yeah, so may some of you already have heard about vertical farming. Um, our goal is to grow more with less. So as you may know, 40% of all the land uh, that's ice free is used for agriculture. It uses 70% um, of all the fresh water and provides or like pollutes the, our environment by 30% of all the emitted greenhouse gases. Uh, we think that vertical farming can definitely be part of the solution to that, also for cities, because if you see these numbers, cities only uh, cover 3% of the surface, so they are rather small, but almost uh, more than half the people are living there, and we think that uh, food should be pr uh, produced where it's consumed. Um, we are convinced that we can um, be a lot more productive on a surface, we use a lot more, a lot less water, and uh, we are also producing pesticide-free. 
And you may now know that almost half of the Swiss people are interested in such products. And um, let's get to the next slide. So uh, we have attracted a lot of interest in the last years, um, but there are also some downsides, of course, and that's the high consumption of electric power. Um, in Switzerland, we have the good situation that almost, that it's rather easy to get um, more or less climate neutral electricity. Um, and the picture you see, it's also that we from ESI are looking in a very um, circular way. So we want to get our farms integrated into cities. Uh, the best solution would be right aside a, a center or a shopping center or a distribution center from a retailer or also like directly in a building in the basement, for example, where we could also use um, the waste warmth we get from all the, the lightning. So that would be interesting. And um, we really are in that circular um, thinking. So if you're interested in that, feel free to join the, the challenge. Then we have two different challenges. The first one is like, uh, would, be, would it be possible to supply the city of Bern um, with herbs, leafy greens uh, through vertical farming? So that would be really interesting. So what are the restrictions? So is it uh, rather space? Is it know-how? Is it um, power? What's um, hindering that change? There are also some uh, adv advantages and disadvantages to classic agriculture. And um, then you also have a, a second challenge. There it's rather uh, the location. So where will be the ideal location? I already mentioned some things, but I'm sure you can come up with uh, different ideas. Um, so there are different parameters which um, rather limit the locations to a very few number, but may you find other possibilities. Um, I would be very happy to have at least one team. If it's challenge A or B, I don't mind. Um, I around the next two days. So if you have questions, just let me know and then we can discuss all of the details. Thank you very much, Tobias. Welcome. So these are uh, all the resources that uh, are already put together. Mm -hmm. to solve the, the challenge. Uh, now, the challenge number four, I think it's Philip who should present it, I guess. No, um, uh, I will do the presentation. Oh, it's ben Philip. Benjamin, yeah. sorry. Thank you very much. Um, yes, we are from the Research Institute, EMPA, and we're working in the Urban Energy Systems Lab. Um, our group mainly focuses on data-driven control of building energy systems and district energy systems. Um, we see that the that buildings have a large impact on on the environment because they are responsible for worldwide more than one third of the energy consumption and CO two emissions. Um, maybe you can go to the next slide. Thank you. And in Switzerland, it's even more. Um, but we also see that the building sector is not very far in terms of digitalization, which would have a large potential to reduce these emissions and the energy consumption. Therefore, we have at EMPA a demonstrator building called NEST, uh, where new technologies and control algorithms are developed and tested. And therefore we have for this propose uh, a lot of sensors which measure temperatures and so on uh, in a one minute interval. So we have a large set of data that we can use to improve the sustainability and energy efficiency of buildings. Uh, typically, uh, building can be building can be improved in terms of sustainability and efficiency by refurbishment. So improving insulation, improving uh, the windows and so on, and also improving the heating system. Or we can improve the operation of a building by upgrading the control system. Um, thank you. Yes. So the overall challenge is to figure out which approach uh, leads to the best improvement of the efficiency of buildings. So one typical approach is to investigate the dependencies between 
the heating power input to the indoor climate in a later point in time, for example, or yeah, other inputs that are important for the thermal dynamics of a building. So we want to figure out which inputs have a large impact on, on future indoor climate. Um, by that, you can figure out then if it's better to, to improve the insulation or how these interrelations can be used for improving the building operation. Maybe you can go to the next slide. So a possible approach here is to start with the visualization of the data and to see the correlation between ambient temperature and indoor temperature. And what's the influence of different inputs that um, change the indoor temperature in a later step. Then another uh, step then in, in the challenge would be to model these correlations, which we figured out from, from the first uh, part of the challenge. And to find a statistical model that helps us to improve building operation with, for example, predictive control. And in a last step, um, because sensors are usually expensive to, to commission and to operate, uh, we would like to stick to the smallest amount of sensors that are necessary to, to do that. And that's also the third part of our challenge. So we would be glad if, if you join our challenge and improve building operation because it has a large impact. And for that, we would offer you an open data set from the Nest building. We have also a Wikipedia where all informations uh, are available. And if the data set is not enough, we can also provide you access to our Nest database via an REST API and many more information. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, of course, when there are several challenges like that, I think you will first meet in the zoo in the Wonder Me area and uh, figure out who of, uh, of the group wants to tackle which problem or how to hierarchize the problems within the group. So feel free uh, to join and discuss. Uh, the challenge number five is presented by Adrian. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. OK, great. Um, this is uh, um, a challenge that uh, is re relying on a bit of um, a, uh, like one could you know, in that sector almost say older project. So we are, we are dealing with a um, data set here that we acquired in 2019. Um, if you want to um, switch to the next slide. I can uh, explain it quickly as a bit of a, a text, but we did a, um, the Sole AI project was um, um, a project that was mandated by the Federal Office for Energy for the Fachhochschule Nordwestschweiz uh, in 2018. And uh, the idea was to come up with a consistent uh, deep learning based vector data set that contains all uh, solar panels that are currently installed in Switzerland. And this was made possible by the new Swiss image data set and the 10 centimeter solution proved to be doing pretty well for this type of detection. And we have an inventory now. Um, we, we ran an inference that went all the way to the layers of 2018 and 19 of Swiss Marsh. That means we don't have Zurich and everything east of that inference yet, but we do have the areas of Bern and Lausanne and Geneva, so um, Basel as well. So quite a couple of the bigger cities of Switzerland are covered by the data set already. And um, this is used by the Federal Office of um, Energy to like validate their energy statistics and to, to monitor the progress of the um, like buildup of solar energy that they want to um, monitor over the next years. And obviously this is a process that can be done with every new iteration of aerial imagery that we get. 
but uh, the data set is here and um, we would like to like um, um, pick on the creativity here of, of the people. So there's um, there are, uh, two things that we thought already that can be done uh, on top of just having solar energy statistics and knowing how much uh, wattage is produced uh, more or less in Switzerland. Um, so this would be uh, to go more fine granular and, and look at individual houses. There's a nice data set um, called sonnendach.ch uh, where there's the roof inclinations of all roof areas in Switzerland recorded as well as their solar potential, like how much solar uh, irradiance they receive over the year. And um, so there could be very interesting to do some predictive modeling. This is also probably very interesting for energy suppliers um, to know like a few days in advance, like how much sun hours are going to come, how much um, solar input uh, is going to, uh, to be seen in the grid. So that would be some interesting predictive modeling that could be done there, uh, probably mainly based on weather data, but also possibly on 3D data. And uh, the other thing that we thought of already is that uh, potentially like uh, large roofs like industrial areas or something that don't have solar panels yet installed but have a high potential could be identified and then um, like told to the city to um, the, the owners uh, respectively eventually that um, their buildings are particularly suitable for solar power and that we could uh, use this type of like input Okay, so uh, maybe one, one slide next. Uh, there's a couple of uh, data sets of resources that we could use. And um, the, the two ideas that I just presented in Challenges say they're, they're only a, a suggestion. Uh, if, you, if you have great ideas to come up with what to do with our uh, detections, with our data set, that is uh, um, greatly appreciated as well. So we, we're counting on some creativity here. So the, um, the data sets that we can provide or that Swiss Topo provides is definitely the 10 centimeters Swiss marsh since a few months, this is open to the public and everyone can download uh, as much as they want on, on this data set. So this is really great. Um, then I collected uh, a few more specific to this task uh, data sets and the one would be an export of the plus minus city parameter of burn um, with these roof inclinations and the solar potential of every single building. So we actually have a, a building starter set. Um, you could download this in 3D, but I, I provide it already as a geo package. So it's more easy to handle. Um, we also have the solar energy estimations, like the statistics report, of course, of the Federal Office of Energy. So they do know how much wattage arrives, although this is geographically not um, very uh, fine granular. Um, there is some data from Meteo Swiss that is just available like that, especially like uh, current uh, values of uh, like data points um, that you can just query that I think I updated every 10 minutes. Um, I would be happy if someone can come up with historic data sets. I, I haven't been able to uh, acquire historic data sets yet. I'm still like in negotiations, but I'm, I'm pretty sure as all, all of you are pretty clued up here on open data, you might be able to find something like that. Um, of course, you have the detections that we, we can provide um, because it's, it's a large data set. I'm, I also cropped this to the city perimeter of Bern in, in this example Adrian? that I can provide now. Adrian? Yeah. Um, I think yes? you can go in detail with the, uh, I mean, okay. it's, it's great that, uh, I mean, it's very clear that solar energy is uh, a big focus and that there is a lot of information. I think mm -hmm. you should go in detail within the team. And everybody okay. who is, would be interested, I can definitely go deeper with you. <laughs> uh, so I'll welcome the next, oh, these are some of the images that you showed. Um, the challenge number six, heat monitoring uh, in Bern. 
I think it's... it's me. Are you, do you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Can you say yes. your name? Moritz. Hi, it's Moritz. Yes, I'm Moritz from the University of Bern. And um, you may also see me. So um, since four years, our subgroup of the university, we're um, handling with those, with those uh, measurement devices. And they are self-made out of cups that normally people uh, eat salad or something, but we measure temperature with that. So we are measuring temperature. You can maybe go to the next side, uh, slide, yes. Uh, since 2018, we're measuring the temperature in Bern um, during the summer um, to, to measure the urban heat of the city of Bern. So every summer, 60 to 80 of these self-made um, devices were distributed. And um, they're really cheap, like one device is only 65 francs, like a normal device is like uh, 400 francs. Um, since this year, we're in cooperation with the city and give us a burn. And until now, our focus light on the nighttime urban heat. That's on one hand due to the fact that the urban heat island is more prominent during the night. But on the other hand, our devices, they do have a bias during the day. So um, depending on, on uh, the sun and on the wind, there's like um, one to two or even more degrees bias during the day. Uh, a colleague of mine, Moritz Gubler, he, um, he uh, investigated this bias and he could like, um, he could show that it's, it's, uh, it's mainly due to sun and wind. And, but still we don't know enough about this, about this error. So you can maybe go to the next slide. So that are the consequences. For example, this is my latest study. So I did a nighttime and the daytime map of the urban heat of Bern. The nighttime uh, was accepted. Daytime was not accepted due to the bias uh, of our stations. Uh, maybe to the next slide. So here uh, you see that study of, of my colleague, Moritz Gubler. Uh, you can see like on the left top, the influence of, of the sun. Uh, and then of, uh, of the wind in the middle, and then down you see that really like during the night, our measurement devices are, work are working greatly, but during the day we have this bias. And um, uh, next slide. And your challenge would be to make our daytime uh, data great again, so that we can also not only use the, uh, the nighttime data of our devices, but also the daytime um, um, the daytime values to have an idea about a better idea about the urban heat of burn during the day. So the idea would be to develop a transfer function based on biases and meteorological parameters measured at three reference stations. So where we have one station, uh, one low cost station, and one um, like uh, one normal station. But we also have uh, land cover data and building geometry data in order to correct for the estimated radiative bias of each station. And so maybe to the last slide. slide. So that's the data we have, raw temperature data of all our measurement stations, and then um, uh, meteorological parameters from 2018 and 2019 of three uh, other stations. So I would be happy if there are people joining to my group and see you on Wondermy. Thank you very much. Uh, challenge number seven. Basileos? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Basileos. I am the founder of the ESV Solar AG. We are working at the intersection of renewable energies and blockchain technology. We recently uh, launched a, a project, we call it WeFi, uh, where we would like to implement the concept of fractional ownership and tokenization for creating a framework and facilitate the platform for mobilizing funding for, P for PV projects. Uh, currently, the Lucerne University of Science and Art is conducting a pre preliminary study, uh, so-called InnoCheck. So the project is a very early stage, uh, stage and uh, we are looking for partners, industrial research institutes to support us in this journey. Uh, next slide, please. 
and the next uh, slide. So what is all about? Uh, as mentioned before, cities are playing an important role in uh, climate change and they will be an important part for tackling climate change. But the transition uh, from a fossil fuel to a renewable energy based smart city is not going to happen at free or cost. So the question is how much capital is needed to realize the energy transition and transform our cities to green smart cities. You see on the slide some figures. So global on, from the global perspective, 1.1 trillion US dollar are needed annually to finance a green urban, urban infrastructure. The Swiss Bankers Association estimated the demand annually for the nation of Switzerland, not only for the cities to 12.9 billion. So this is <clears throat> a, lot, a lot of capital that is needed. So for many, many years, scientists analyzed the reasons why green financing is not working so well. And they identified three main gaps. The one gap is the so-called funding gap, the, one, the other gap is the trans transparency gap, and the third one, the efficiency gap. So we strongly believe that blockchain technology could provide uh, solutions for bridging this, these uh, gaps. And we, this is at least our hypothesis, we need solutions for mobilizing these funds. We need uh, innovative solutions, scalable, replicable solutions for financing uh, the energy transition and reward mechanisms to mobilize private funding and channel public and other alternative sources. So um, what is our approach? Our approach is to implement <clears throat> the concept of fractional ownership and digitalization of energy, because we believe that this is a way to, to do it. So we created uh, two sub uh, challenges to 7A, the one is for uh, uh, participants with coding experience. Uh, we would like to, to create something like a minimum viable uh, platform, a decentralized application where we could implement uh, <clears throat> this fractionalization, maybe actioning of trading of ownership rights, ownership rights of PV systems, lending, borrowing, and so on of digital assets. For non-coding, for, for participants with no coding experience, we would like to brainstorm with you all how to design an incentive model for, for this platform. But because this is supposed to be a blockchain network and we need the right incentives to, uh, to all participants. We also would like to design how we should trans, uh, transform uh, this platform from a central, initially central platform to a fully decentralized platform. Additionally, what is very important is to create a strategy how this platform could achieve economy uh, network effects, but it's very, very important to create additional value on top of trusted data. And um, yeah, and the next slide, please. And the next slide is, uh, I would, we would like also brainstorm with you how we could create um, uh, incentive mechanisms uh, for, for uh, production and consumption of renewable energy, uh, provide flexibility of sharing uh, energy related data. And maybe if you have an idea to work on your own uh, finance related solution. Next slide, we have uh, created a GitHub repo where you can find uh, code solutions, uh, educational materials, but you, I can also help you with, with, uh, with my ideas. And also we created mirror board where we can collaborate all together. We are, will be very happy to, to work for this challenge and we are very much looking forward to brainstorm with you all. Fantastic, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, now we have the challenge number yes, eight. Yes, that's me. Hello. Yes. All right. Um, so this challenge is about load shifting to incentivize renewable energy. Um, so maybe you can switch to the next slide. 
So this is basically what the, the challenge boils down to. It boils down to the question, what, what's the right time to, to charge this car? Um, so is there a way to kind of um, optimize the, the time of using electricity in order to, to create an incentive uh, for more production of uh, renewable energy? Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. And uh, so here, just an, as, as an example, like the composition of electricity production uh, fluctuates quite strongly during day and during season, of course. And this is one plot, for example, how does this electricity is, um, yeah, is constituted, um, including imports. So you see there are quite strong fluctuations of composition. Um, next slide, please. Um, so the, the first step, and probably this might this is probably actually the hardest step, is kind of finding out how actually or what does it mean to the production side if I move my uh, time when I load the, my electric car. So what is actually kind of how can I set the incentives and when would I need to shift it? What metrics? What um, kind of, uh, yeah, what causes do I need to take into account and so on? And there is, for example, for Switzerland, we have imports from neighboring countries which fluctuate strongly. They may again depend on prices on the market and so on. So there are many, uh, very many factors that play a role here. And this is kind of quite challenging topping to find out what is now, yeah, how could we boil this down to a metric to actually? decide on when to load uh, or charge our cars. Next slide, please. That's, yeah, that's basically what I said, that the goal would be to find this metric. Then next slide. Um, and if we have such a metric, kind of we can then look at uh, the specific case of charging electrical uh, vehicles. So we have some data sets of uh, electrical vehicles and we, then we could basically or you could look um, kind of what is, yeah, and what, to what extent can you move around these electric cars and, and so on, according to such a metric. Next slide. Um, and the resources, basically, there's a lot of data about the electricity market, production prices, and so on, open from entry. Then there's import and export data of electricity from Swiss Grid. Um, then there are uh, is uh, data about the CO2 emission factors related to uh, production types. And we have e-charging data, data sets of um, electric vehicles. Thank you. So we will be happy to see you on Wonder Me. Yes. Uh, so it's not the last challenge because we will uh, present the first challenge that uh, uh, was Arsenal was not ready yet, so the challenge number nine with uh, Stefan. I think it's Stefan presenting. Yes. Hello, everybody. I don't see myself, so I'm confused. But that's because of Zoom. But it's good. It's good. You're thanks. there. Uh, you. Thanks. Uh, thanks for inviting me. This is the surprise challenge. My name is Stefan Keller. I'm from the Eastern University of Switzerland and i have an extra slide so it's about cool urban location for a hot future it's about crowdsourced improvements um, and um, improvement proposals for um, urban uh, open spaces this is an application to identify and uh, i evaluate public and private uh, kind of semi-private urban open spaces throughout switzerland and potentially also, also beyond, and to suggest ways to improve their infrastructure, such as uh, shade structures like tents or, or, or roofs, trees, water points, green facades, or just benches which are not black and uh, too hot to sit on. The project goals um, of this challenge are rather not so new, um, uh, probably some of you know Zürich Vinoy or Lenzburg Vinoy. And 
uh, then this is a similar challenge. The project goal is to promote measures to counteract the heat effect uh, during summer nights, for especially in the cities, for the attention of authorities and uh, private owners of uh, settlements. So it's, as I said, it's similar to Surinoy, but it's not about repairing the infrastructure and it's not about just targeting the administration. It's about just uh, or rather targeting uh, the, the building owners like playgrounds um, or, or smaller places. And um, it's a mobile first responsive web app to be implemented with services whenever possible and uh, with a simple back end. Um, it has been called earlier um, public particip participation GIS. Now then um, it's, it's rather more crowdsourced. Next slide, please. So the goal is that it's a private, a private privacy preserving because it's about rating. So you have to uh, somehow log in. And we do this with uh, open reviews uh, and we are using open source and open data all over the place. Some user stories to understand what's to be expected from this app. So as a user um, participating on this replica application, I want to add a special note at any place um, on the map or delete my own note, uh, but not others. And as a user, I want to add a remark to any selected or filtered OpenStreetMap object or delete that one. And finally, I want to rate a spatial note. I mean, this note just mentioned before or an OpenStreetMap object just mentioned before. And that was too fast for the slide. Oh, sorry. And, um, and the, all, the, all this rating is being uh, stored in open reviews. Then, then changing the, um, the view as a settlement owner uh, at, uh, also, uh, um, be it uh, administration or uh, private owner uh, like uh, Siedlungen, uh, larger, larger um, neighborhoods. Um, I want you to download a list about ratings and proposals. Next slide. The possible tasks and task groups are about six which I identified. And um, it's uh, first of all to design a mock uh, user interface for the app without implement, implementing yet. Second, organize data and services like finding OVC map tags for infrastructures like trees, benches, um, as I said before, those infrastructure items. Then we um, decided to implement it uh, in Flutter, which means it's multi platform running on Android iOS and on the web. Fourth, um, uh, implement uh, the back end, which will be a Python server. And fifth, uh, write the website uh, blog post presenting the application. And there is an example um, I suggest Markdown, which is um, technically here. And uh, six, write reviews and add notes. Uh, I mean, to make a nice presentation tomorrow. Um, to, uh, to add those reviews. Everyone is invited to participate. I bring along four young students, uh, interns actually, um, which are coders, which somehow make sure that, it, that there, uh, a prototype implementation will take place. But we also look for designers and volunteers for data preparation, like entering the data, completing Wikidata entries and things like this for a rating. Next slide. As I said, um, well, I bring along those uh, four, four students which um, uh, formed a team called Almost, which, uh, you know, um, OST. <sighs> and and um, OpenStreetMap will be at the core of the infrastructure of geospatial data. And I have an extra slide on, on this. Then um, to boost the application, that was too fast again. Mm -hmm. That's right. um, and, and to boost the, 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 the content, um, we also, of course, look at the nice open data from the city of Zurich and uh, from Swiss Topo. And uh, if you have any questions, um, ask the team almost. 
on channel nine, I mean for challenge nine, um, or myself um, representing the OST and the Klima cluster over there. So next slide, please. And um, so this and is- don't go too deep into the detail of the data. No. You will, I think you will have the chance in, within the teams. And um, uh, yeah. all the slides are actually in the different channels of the um, Slack. So if you want to go deeper into the data, uh, it can go in. No need, no. And, and then this has been copied to the project um, the page and also a separate data resource. So exactly. that's, that's somehow my hat, uh, changing my hat for to OpenStreetMap. Um, and it's just to say that's a treasure trove of vector spatial data and a shining example of open data. That's it. Yeah, this is side. true. This is uh, this was necessary to to talk about. That's true. OpenStreetMap. Okay. Uh, now I have to go all the way up again. So sorry for the not so nice change. Yeah. We're back there because Daniel Zürcher joined us to present the challenge number one, EcoBooster innovation. Yes, uh, hello everyone. Oh, Daniel, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Oh, okay, sorry. So then I give you the word. <laughs> I okay, thank I you, uh, Luis. You, 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 will, uh, you can assist me uh, maybe um, at the end. Um, hello, everybody. I'm sorry that um, uh, I was late to um make the beginning of the presentation um i had some problems to overcome the firewall of the swiss confederation because zoom is considered as something dangerous in the um, uh, swiss um, federal offices so we have uh, firewalls and I, I was not able first to just uh, leave my vlan that was my main problem Okay, thank you very much for listening uh, to the challenge number one called EcoBooster. EcoBooster is an idea management tool uh, to boost the innovation inside of companies. And uh, you can go to the next slide. It's um, the idea management tool is, um, is uh, structured or is uh, conceived as a game. It means that it allows uh, several um, functionalities that are current in games to be used in this um, idea management system, like uh, multiplayer, uh, people interacting uh, for for the same um, in the same project, etc. So it's a gamified idea management tools. It can be used in companies or public organizations. Uh, as an idea management tool, it should activate the, the collective intelligence of the people of the company and their creativity. Um, the ideas are um, collaboratively analyzed, developed and evaluated, especially concerning their impact on sustainability. This means that every idea had, has to be described in uh, its impact on all three aspects of sustainable development. It means the social impact, the economic impact, and the ecological impact. Next slide. Can somebody uh, go to the next slide? Ah, thank you. So the challenges uh, are like this. The um, uh, EcoBoost exists already as a um, as a programmed game, but only for one location. It means uh, you will see at the end, there is a link going to a YouTube movie where you see um, one example of an idea that has been developed inside of the Echo Booster, just as an example to show how it functions. And uh, you will see that uh, this idea has been developed in one location of one company. So um, if we think now that we are um, in a hackathon and in a conference tomorrow with uh, public providers of utilities, um, in general, they have a lot of different infrastructures. They have, have a lot of um, buildings, uh, offices, etc., in different locations. And this would be a challenge 
to create a test modeling of, of the whole work area of, um, for example, a company that has a lot of different uh, locations uh, with offices or infrastructures. And this would um, allow that inside of the idea management tool, uh, every idea can be uh, located at the place where it should be implemented. Then the second challenge is uh, maybe uh, the people working on this challenge will have idea how to, uh, to um, improve the design of the graphic interface of the tool in order to best identify new ideas as well as facilitate the development and collaboration process inside of the game. And then the third challenge is um, still something that is not completely developed inside of the game. Um, the idea creation process uh, is connected with points. You can earn points as uh, the further you develop an idea, the more points you get. And um, one uh, point earning line is already clearly define, defined because it, it, um, it um, leads to, um, to the, the, the fact that a bonus, uh, uh, a financial bonus can be attributed to an idea if, it's, um, if the idea is enough mature to be decided to be uh, from the, for example, management of a company. If they say this idea, we like it very much, we will do it. And we gave a, we give a bonus of three thousand francs, for example. So all the people who will have collaborated in the creation of the idea and have earned earned point, they will get a part of this financial bonus. But there is also um, a bonus point system that is more like fun because it's a game. So you can earn social points, ecological points. And uh, there could be a challenge to help to develop um, a kind of uh, a ranking system. And maybe if you see the Echo Booster, um, for example, if you look at the movie, uh, you will uh, have ideas for other possibilities. We're open to new ideas. The next slide. So maybe uh, I would yeah, say I have, maybe you I go already, fast on the last. Yeah, I have already exactly. described the three challenges. So every challenge has its own uh, slide. So this would be the, the different location. This would, yeah, the challenge uh, B is uh, the interaction inside uh, to improve it. Uh, and then the, this point ranking system. So you can go more in details when you read that. Next slide. So you, here you have some um, our contacts. You have uh, an internet site already uh, uh, where EcoBooster is described a little bit more and you have this demo movie on YouTube. Uh, and uh, the three persons here with um, emails, especially Louis Baumgartner is available uh, today and tomorrow it will be Andrea Zien and I'm available both days. But I'm not the computer specialist. The computer specialists are uh, Andrea and Louis. OK, fantastic. Um, thank you very much. So again, um, some of the challenges have under challenges. And um, I think it's important also to uh, see that we were hoping for more participants, uh, but COVID and uh, too much time in front of the computer, I think, has been um, wearing a bit some of our uh, registered participants. So we are a bit less than we were expecting. So I think the sub challenges, you will decide within the groups, which are the priorities and how to hierarchize uh, the results. Uh, what is nice is that we have the chance that we will organize a second hackathon about an energy topic in uh, three, four weeks in, at the end of September. Uh, and some of the topics that were presented today are gonna be followed up uh, during the energy hack days, energy data hack days. So they're more specific on, on data. 
Um, and especially the nest challenge, uh, the energy, the, um, the, the, not the innovation booster, but the, the sustainability booster, uh, and maybe a third one are going to be worked on uh, further. So they look really big, but they're also thought for actually a, a longer work. So don't be too worried. And uh, what's also important is uh, try not to make too big things. Um, we think six people is really the maximum. So I think if you are around four or five people, uh, that's right about the right size for for uh, group work yeah you can if you're big if, uh, if there are bigger groups of course you can split in uh, in smaller groups all right so i think now it's time to uh switch to the wonder me space uh i maybe we can put the chat the link in the chat Um, do you have the link quickly? Okay, so I think you have the link right now. Um, so I'll see you there too. And um, go ahead, feel free. And if you have any questions, of course, you can go to us either on Zoom or through Slack or through email. Phone is a little bit tricky, but it's the last resort. You can try it too if it's needed. So thank you for the moment and see you over there. <laughs>